so let me first try to understand the audience so um, uh, mostly we are um, um, students yes sir phd scholars mostly phd scholars uh, of iit indore or from outside also from outside as well very nice that is uh, very good actually so mostly uh, people working in the domain or people uh, who wants uh, who want to actually work in the domain uh, might be the audience no yes sir yeah very nice that is actually so when we uh, deliver some talk if we understand uh, the the kind of audience we have i think uh, uh, that is really useful so let me start uh, today's uh, presentation okay um, so today um, as um, um, i will be you know uh, talking on uh, mostly on semiconductor gas sensors, uh, particularly resistive ones. Um, and we'll see uh, different challenges uh, uh, that uh, we face, um, both as a researcher uh, and, uh, you know, um, as a student in this area. Because uh, although we have been working since, uh, say, uh, uh, more than a decade on this um, front, still we are facing some challenges. So we'll try to, you know, um, define some problem statement, I think that will be really helpful while you uh, pursue your PhD or, or you might already be facing those issues. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's changing. Yeah. So, uh, we are um, actually, uh, we are from nanosensors and devices group uh, that I have established here at, uh, uh, at, um, IIT Guwahati on uh, 11th October 2021. So the group is uh, kind of a new group, uh, but uh, I have been carrying uh, some, you know, um, understanding of the topic, I would say. And uh, uh, we have recently, uh, some uh, one postdoc recently joined us, who is also, uh, I mean, she will be joining on 1st of December. She is also, uh, uh, kind of uh, expert in, uh, I would say, on theoretical um, uh, front of uh, sensors. Uh, we have uh, some PhD student and then a uh, few MTech students. So collectively, we work on um, different uh, uh, fronts of, you know, uh, nano sensors. Okay. Uh, so this is our beautiful campus of ITG. You might be knowing that uh, we are located in. Uh, um, Assam in uh, Guwahati and our campus is one of the beautiful campus in the world. We are also doing good in research um, as per the research citation and all those data that, uh, that uh, you know, some agencies publish. So I would like to, you know, uh, invite you to our campus uh, for, um, we recently invited Professor Saival also to visit, but he was, he's busy in something. So, um, I would also like to uh, invite all of you in some mean, if you can come to our campus, it will be, you know, a uh, great pleasure to host you. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, talking about gas sensors, you know, the, the front is uh, uh, very big, you know, people are working on uh, different kind of materials starting from, you know, uh, 0D, 1D, 3D, 2D, all those kind of uh, materials has been explored. And if you see the broad area, like uh, people started with the polymers and then metal oxides, CNTs, then 2D materials like graphene, MXene, TMDs, and, you know, different um, 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 sensitization, making composites, hybrids of these materials has also been explored because the application is very broad, okay? Uh, earlier, it was uh, uh, like uh, it was centered towards environmental monitoring because gas sensors were known only for, you know, uh, for pollution monitoring. Okay. But it's not that case. Okay. The semiconductor gas sensors or the electronic gas sensors, uh, you know, uh, are, are ex being explored at different fronts. Uh, say, uh, for, say, let's take an example of, uh, say, say, uh, healthcare. Okay. Uh, if if you might be you know following Professor Hossam Hayek's space uh, from Israel, he 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 is exploring uh, sensor arrays for breath analysis, and uh, his work I would say has uh, catalyzed the the uh, area. 
okay so you will find lots of people working on uh, breath analysis in breath analysis okay uh, then uh, food quality and safety i mean uh, this is one important front that uh, uh, government of india is also focusing like uh, uh, like we know that when some fruit uh, spoils it releases some gases okay similarly for fishes also for meat also those things uh, happen so if we can detect those gases you know uh, in trace level at uh, in initial uh, in initial days i think we will be able to save um, um, so much money of uh, of poor farmers okay uh, similarly, for uh, flexible wearable electronics, you know, nowadays the sensors are being integrated in dresses, watches, uh, your gloves. Okay, so so uh, at various fronts, actually, the application. I mean, uh, I would like to say that this gas sensors field is emerging, and although it has been explored since 1950s, okay, uh, the the area is uh, very broad and the application is really broad. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what we will do is uh, uh, we'll um, we'll see some classification of gas sensors in today's talk. Okay. Then we'll see the, some uh, you know um, uh, um, research gap that is uh, persisting since long, and we'll try to define some problem statement. And uh, I have skipped the polymer-based sensors here because there is no meaning of uh, uh, using those in in today's era. Okay. Uh, because we are uh, discussing advanced materials, the polymer based, uh, I think you, you, you might have idea. So we'll start from metal oxide based sensors. And just for example, I have taken this zinc oxide based gas sensors. Uh, although we have been working on various metal oxides, I mean, several metal oxides we have explored, but I have just taken one example because time is limited. Then we'll see. Uh, you know, uh, some uh, transition metal diethylcosanides. Uh, so I have intentionally taken two examples of WS2 and MOS2, and those films has been made by uh, by by different means. Okay, so that will give you an idea that uh, uh, what is uh, 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 is there any you know um, um, challenge uh, when synthesizing these materials. Okay, so how we synthesize these materials and how these films are, are, are prepared, those things also uh, um, define the, sen uh, the sensing parameters of a uh, gas sensors. Okay, so we'll see by these two examples and we'll see one or two maybe example of, uh, of, uh, um, of uh, hybrids and composites of TMDs with metal oxides uh, and noble metals I have not covered because uh, uh, we have limited time okay and then uh, we'll see some other remedies that people are are coming with okay particularly on the front of elemental uh, nanomaterials uh, then um, metal oxide frameworks and uh, we have introduced some natural hybrids we'll see that what is that okay and then we'll summarize the challenges okay and I'll, i will also discuss some future works so these are uh, some market players. I would like to, you know, uh, some of you who are working in the area of gas sensors that you should not always uh, um, um, assist. This is mostly on students, um, student branch, you know, uh, IEEE student branch has organized this. So I would like to highlight these companies who are working on uh, in the area of gas sensors. Okay, so if some of you are working uh, in the front, in the area of gas sensors, I would like some of you to land uh, in these companies, okay, because they need people, but uh, there is no coordination among the inst institutes and uh, um, these companies because they are not coming for campus placements, okay. So, so because they don't need a uh, uh, bulk quantity of, uh, you know, uh, man force. So what you can do is uh, you can... Um, have a look on their website, web pages. Uh, you have to find that who, who all are working, uh, who all are looking into this area. You can directly write to them, okay? Like ABB. ABB is doing very good in uh, sensors front, but we, we uh, consider this uh, like a hardware company, but it's not like that. Similarly, Bosch is doing very good, and they also have very good funds for uh, for uh, R and D. So they have a different component of R and D in their uh, their company. So uh, I think uh, apart from this academic jobs and other things, I think we should also try uh, to uh, to work on uh, 
um, on sensors uh, by directly going to these industries. Okay. Uh, it's not like always we have to go to foundries or some uh, well-known companies like ST Microelectronics and, you know, uh, Texas Instrument. We should not always think in that way. If we are working on sensors, we should also uh, focus on, uh, you know, uh, on getting a job. I think uh, it will be really difficult because you have to write to various companies, but that's that's what we do for postdoctoral positions also. No, we write to, to different faculties and uh, if, say, for example, I write say 100 applications, I get one reply or so, okay? So that's why intentionally I have kept uh, this slide uh, for you people uh, so that uh, uh, some of you can get motivated and uh, uh, you apply in, in these companies, okay? Like Figaro is also doing excellent in sensors. So, so yeah, uh, the growth driver, like why companies are coming and why so many uh, institutes are working towards this is uh, primarily because of uh, increasing government initiatives and regulations regarding worker safety. So we know that in India, we have you know, uh, 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 smart city concept, okay? So smart city can't be realized without having you know, uh, uh, IoT based sensors. So lots of gas sensors and other kind of sensors are required. Okay. So, uh, so this is the uh, uh, primary uh, growth drivers, but apart from that, there are so many other growth drivers nowadays, uh, you know, uh, that why we, we should pursue a career in this particular domain. Okay. However, there are so many challenges in front of you, like the design complexity of these sensors, the shorter lifespan of those sensors. Okay, so nowadays, if even if you are, you know, uh, going to a advanced uh, kind of materials, the packaging and other things uh, also, uh, also, you know, uh, is very important. So, so it will also define the lifespan of your sensors. Okay, so then, um, uh, how to uh, get rid of the humidity uh, and the baseline drift of the sensors? Okay, and selectivity, of course, remains the uh, major pitfall of the of the domain. Okay, so there are different pit pitfalls and challenges in this particular area, but uh, 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 those things can be, uh, um, you know, um, can be, um, um, we can come over uh, to those things by uh, doing good R&D and uh, uh, this can't be done if all of us land lands in, you know, um, uh, academia. We have to also move to some industries and uh, uh, we are also trying to bring some companies to on campus also um, and if we are able to i think uh, that will open a a, a big door for uh, i would say for students and i think that will uh, if 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 some area is giving you a good job uh, it's possible to get good students also yeah so so i think you should explore uh, that part okay then um, if if we if we talk about a chemical sensor that gas sensor falls on okay is is basically um, inspired by a human being okay uh, uh, because we have uh, a sensory receptor sensory and then brain to process all that all data similarly for um, you know um, our, our sensors also have a transducer a receptor section and then analog circuit to amplify and pre-process all those data. And then we have computers to uh, for information information processing. Okay, so uh, so the sensors are uh, inspired by uh, by uh, nature. And nowadays, the the sensory element that you are seeing, the receptor element, people are designing so many receptor elements with the uh, which is inspired by some bio uh, uh, bio material. I mean uh, some biological thing and they are getting good response and other characteristic of a sensor. So um, I think that we should always take inspiration from nature and try to implement that in our day to day uh, research activities. Okay. So if we talk about applications, I will not reiterate it, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, so many gases nowadays uh, has been, you know, uh, um, government's initiative and other purposes i think we have to uh, to to sense so many gases for example the new bs6 engines if you see in automotive i am taking the first example some o2 sensors has been installed on the silencer if you are using a royal enfield motorcycles you might have seen that there is a separate uh, oxygen sensor which was not 
uh, there on the BS4 engines earlier. Okay. So these sensors, you know, uh, so if, if one motorcycle is doing this or one engine is doing that, this, everyone has to do this. So it creates demand. Okay. It creates demand means it not only create the hardware demand from the from the companies it also demand you know uh, from r and d's okay uh, like research organizations like us or or like you okay so so many oxygen sensors has been installed so similarly i think uh, uh, two three more kind of uh, uh, sensors have been installed on on bs6 engines so you can expect that in uh, next generation engines there the puc requirement may not be there so everything has to be sensed inside the uh, the silencer itself okay similarly for water treatment food agriculture uh, you know indoor air quality monitoring military application everywhere you have applications of these sensors okay and still a demand for for uh, for good quality sensors are there in the market i will not go in detail because we have been discussing these things in uh, you know uh, since uh, last 10 minutes or so but uh, quickly i will give you a feel that a breath analyzer like uh, like this person is you know uh, is uh, um, uh, is doing is like uh, uh, for ammonia for example ammonia is a biomarker for gastric diseases renal problems and liver disorder of course their concentration may be different okay similarly for diabetes there are so many biomarkers including acetone okay so this is a very good uh, front to work on for non invasive disease diagnosis okay i will not go in more detail of the definition and other things but uh, you should have a feel that we have two three components of a sensor like you have a receptor then you have a transducer then you have a electric circuit so mostly our work will be uh, uh, based on the receptor because we are using uh, re different receptors with a constant uh, transducer of uh, say interdigitated metal electrodes but it's not that it's not be your case okay you might be working on uh, on electric circuit for 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 gas sensors you might be working on optimizing the transducers i will i will i have tried to make one slide on different fronts on which you can work i will i will show it to you maybe it it may be there in in, in our lecture okay so um, if if i classify gas sensors based on different transduction technique i will classify into this six six or seven types okay the first one is the resistive sensors that uh, we will be discussing today but uh, it's not the end okay uh, this is just uh, starting i mean this is a very simplistic device in a gas sensor then you have fet based devices then electrochemical based devices piezoelectric sensors depending on what uh, transduction technique you are using if you are measuring the change in work function or change in capacitance or you are trying to measure the reflection absorption uh, fluorescence uh, change in refractive index you might be using optical sensors okay the area might be uh, or the the transduction technique might be different but the uh, aim is same that we have to detect the some gas in, in you know in um in with a good sensitive uh, good selectivity and uh, uh, um, the limit of detection and all, all those parameters that you might be knowing uh, of a sensor okay then let uh, we'll come to this slide again but uh, let's have a feel of the existing technology for gas sensors so uh, i have classified this into three parts i have not uh, covered the circuitry and other things here uh, but the fundamental uh, parts of the the, the uh, uh, gas sensors are like uh, you have a transducer, you have a receptor material, and how this receptor material uh, has been formed as a film also hampers or you know uh, uh, also affect your uh, sensing capabilities. Okay, your transducer can be fabricated by different lithographies. Okay, depending on for what application you are using, you can choose the lithography technique carefully. Okay. Then you have this LTCC technology for transducer fabrication. And nowadays uh, you are using various printing technologies. Okay. Because uh, as we have just discussed in very brief that uh, uh, we want, you know, uh, we want our sensing, sensing material, the receptors on a flexible substrate. Okay, 
And when the flexible substrates comes, I think printing technology has um, advantages. Okay. So nowadays, this maskless printing technologies has been also in demand and uh, um, um, people has been exploring from, you know, inkjet printing to aerosol jet printing and uh, other kind of printings as well. Okay. Receptor materials, as I have uh, also mentioned that you have uh, various receptor materials. Okay, like polymers, uh, metal oxides. Okay, there were some disadvantages or there were some challenges with this material. So people moved on. Okay, they moved to graphene and other carbon derivatives like CNTs. Okay, then they found that okay, these materials also have some challenges. Okay, they moved towards other uh, 2D materials beyond graphene, like transition metal dichalcogenides. Okay, now. Uh, since uh, I think uh, uh, since 10 years or so, people has been working in this particular area. See, graphene was invented in 2004, and I think TMDs people started working in early nine, uh, 2009 or so. Okay, so I think it's been like about uh, uh, time flies actually. So 10, 13 years people has been working in this area. So now they are also moving uh, beyond this area. Okay, they they also want to explore some other materials because every receptor materials you will find there is some challenges okay we'll try to discuss uh, in very brief uh, if the time permits okay then how these films are made for example in, in for laboratory uh, purposes we say if we are processing some material by some say chemical mean okay we drop casting and then dry and we have a good film and then we see the sensing properties but it's not the case for 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 industry Okay, they have to have a good film by some uh, PVT or say some CVT technique. Okay, and then only they, they, they have a good film, then they have to see the addition of that film on the, on, on the substrate, how they will fabricate the transducer on the top of the film or the, at the bottom of the film. Okay, then they have to see that how, how they have been packaged. And the, another challenge that you might be not knowing is how to cover that film by something that, you know, Nobody can do reverse engineering. It means that they, they, they have to hide that film also so that, uh, uh, for example, uh, Ravi is buying some sensor and he want to see uh, that, uh, okay, um, what type of uh, material this uh, this is. So uh, so what he will do, he will tell his student that, okay, you do uh, XRD of this film, okay? But the XRD will, XRD will be misleading. So company fabricate in, in this way. No, no, not all companies, but most of them, uh, do do in that way okay and that is not uh, bad eh? that is ethical okay because you have done so many so much r d you don't want your film to be exposed to to the external world because you have patent and other things of that film uh, okay and that that is the novelty of novelty of your uh, sensor basically okay so i was making this slide but i i'm really sorry that i could not make it but uh, um, it it looks kind of hazy but uh, i just wanted to give you a feel that uh, uh, you can walk on various fronts of you know um, uh, various front of uh, of of gas sensors or 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 normal electronic sensors okay apart from this transducer fabrication and uh, um, the flexible uh, flexible electronics part that we talked, um, then we talked this uh, um, um, uh, sensing material, those things. But apart from that, you you can have some computational studies that will be helpful for the experimental uh, people working in the domain to identify the good receptor material. Okay, data analysis is is another another challenge in this particular area. Okay, so we we are also trying to incorporate AI and machine learning you know, to interpret uh, data and overcome the the um, issues like uh, uh, selectivity, okay? So I don't have uh, time to give some example on this, but uh, if you are um, interested, you can, you know, we can have discussion one, one to one, okay? Packaging is, uh, is also one of the challenge of uh, current era of, of uh, gas sensors, okay? Because, uh, and the older that wire bonding based, uh, I mean, um, technologies are no longer, you know, uh, useful uh, when you want very, very sen sensitive sensors. Okay, so flip chip and other kind of packaging are nowadays uh, being utilized and system in packaging is also uh, one 
one front where LTCC and other technologies are being explored. Then back in electronics, as a student, as an electronic student, you might be interested in uh, in interface circuitry design and uh, signal processing of of, of those data. Uh, then back in electronics, I think uh, so many people are working, and I think if you work in uh, coordination with some experimental people who actually uh, uh, who actually develop some sensors they can tell you what problems they, they are facing okay some of the problems uh, i will also try to cover it up very quickly okay so uh, you can have a look on this slide i think uh, i have tried to cover uh, um, uh, different uh, challenges that came into my mind but uh, but this is just a very brief uh, it can be you know uh, broader than broader than this Okay, so now we are coming to the slide that we have seen in the um, just uh, one or two slides before. I'm coming on on, on that again. Okay, so uh, in the transducer fabrication, uh, the the challenge is you know optimization of uh, of contact with the uh, metal electrode. What I mean by that is the um, is the you know uh, for example if if you are making uh, say some uh, uh, sensing material by 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 some chemical mean okay say if you are making some film by say spray pyrolysis or by or by some other mean on on a transducer which you have already fabricated on a sensor to substrate what will happen actually the percolation path that is formed you know in in such a way that you might be landing at at uh, very high resistance okay but in, in in it should not be the case if if you form your film in better way or or if you optimize the transducer in some way okay there there should be good contact between the sensing material and your electrode that you are using for some cases we have seen that a spiral kind of uh, you know um, uh, transducer that we fabricate are uh, works much better than than this kind of comb comb structure okay so those things we have to take in, into consideration and we should not ignore the transducer fabrication. Then if, if we talk about this comb type of structure, there is also a way that you can optimize the, the, the width between two fingers and you know width, width between two different combs. Okay. So we have uh, uh, tried to optimize it once and we have seen, I mean, we, we, uh, we were doing by optical lithography um, and then we, we did some e-beam lithography and we found that uh, the one micron gap uh, was very, very sensitive as compared to uh, five, uh, five micron gap. So it, it, it is kind of exponential growth of, uh, uh, you know, just by decreasing the comb, comb, uh, comb um, uh, gap. Okay. So those things also matter. Uh, um, uh, very high. Uh, I mean, particularly if you are dealing with the uh, say LOD of say uh, 50 ppb or so. Okay. Then uh, various printing technologies, uh, you know, possess various challenges. Okay. For example, if you are working on inkjet printer, for example. Okay. So if you are working on a commercial dematics inkjet printer, what will happen? You will see if you uh, some of you might be working in the domain. You will see that you have to you know uh, add good amount of ethyl cellulose or some other things to the ink you are formulating okay if you are buying a commercial i think that will not be available so if you are formulating your own ink you will find that uh, uh, that um, um, you are adding ethyl cellulose uh, in in excess amount okay that also hamper while you while you print it uh, i mean that will hamper your gas sensing properties okay it will allow you to print uh, very nicely okay you will have a very good transducers okay say um, say for example if you are using a silver nanoparticle to print a transducer okay you are adding something to make it viscous okay and to to uh, you know reach um, uh, say 10 cp or so uh, viscosity okay then if you print, you will have very good electrodes and you will have, say, gaps of, say, 100 micron or so. Okay. Yeah. So what will happen that uh, it will also, it, it will hamper your sensing properties that ethyl cellulose that you have added up actually is hampering your sensing properties. Okay. No, because this, uh, this has gone in the electrode, not in, uh, not in the receptor, then also it will hamper. So that is some, something that will be kind of, you know, um, 
uh, awkward uh, thing for you that yeah. you have not added anything yeah. to the receptor yeah. material, then also yeah. your uh, your sensor uh, performance has decreased. Okay. Then for receptor material, you might already be knowing that uh, we are facing challenges on stability. Okay, stability in in case of metal oxides based sensors. So what happen if you if you go at very high temperature, they will degrade. Okay, we have seen that in TGA and other things. Okay, this is very common problem in TMDs. Okay, with MOSC2, we we saw like at 450 degrees or so, it is getting totally converted into MOO3. Okay, so stability is 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 one of the challenges for for um, TMD based sensors. Okay. Selectivity. Selectivity uh, is very, very common issue in case of uh, 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 metal oxide as well as for TMDs. Although TMDs are more selective towards some oxidizing or reducing gases, but still there are some issues on selectivity in, T, uh, in 2D materials, uh, 2D material based, you know, uh, sensors. Okay. So these selectivities can be um, you know, um, handled in, uh, I think, uh, by uh, by some computational studies or by some data analysis. Okay. Uh, otherwise, um, if, if, if you want to develop, say, N-type or P-type film and want to, you know, um, um, reliably um, detect some particular oxidizing or reducing gases, uh, that will be, and, and that too, in a mixture of oxidizing and reducing gases, those things will be very, very difficult without these two techniques, okay? Long-term reliability is an issue with the uh, with polymer-based sensors, but with TMDs, we have seen that over a year, we have checked some devices, I will, give, I will show you some example. We have not seen uh, issue in the long-term reliability except for the polymer based sensors okay then another challenge in front of uh, um, researchers are the the operating temperature of the uh, metal oxide based sensors and that's what the motivation was behind uh, you know going to the or shifting from metal oxide sensors to the next generation advanced functional materials like uh, uh, tmds okay so uh, operating temperature is one of the demand of the current time because uh, for IoT sensors, you can't expect your heater to dissipating some milliwatt uh, without any cows, okay? You want them um, to operate at room temperature, okay? So, uh, so uh, uh, this is another front uh, people are working, okay? Then, uh, of course, you have a go very good transducer and um, a very good receptor, but how to integrate them? How to deposit this receptor film on on uh, a good receptor material film on a, on your transducer or beneath your transducer? Okay. So uh, addition, scalability, those things are some issues in the uh, in film formation. Uh, in printed electronics, we have uh, separate challenges. So um, uh, like uh, nowadays, for inkjet printing, people are trying to heat the substrate itself. Okay, while printing. Okay, so to to increase the addition between the receptor film and mm, uh, the substrate okay so yeah so there are challenges on every front that's why i i wanted to elaborate this slide because the aim of uh, this talk was mm -hmm. to highlight the challenges okay mm -hmm. so let's understand this with some example i think uh, um, we'll see them very quickly because uh, experimental results it's not possible to uh, you know um, um, <clears throat> discuss all of them uh, you know uh, even for a single material okay so what what you are seeing now is uh, uh, ZNO nano rod kind of thing which was prepared by uh, some microwave root okay and this is the five micron ID that we use uh, and this has been fabricated by um, uh, uh, by optical lithography so in other wor works also unless uh, unless or until I say uh, that uh, some other kind of electrode is, has been used you should assume that uh, we have used this type of IDs okay so this is a cross sensitivity data not a histogram uh, a, a dynamic plot i would say for zeno so you see the current ranges are very very high like um, we are getting about 100 nan 100 nanoamp or so okay but you see the 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 respective you know histogram it was not selective to any any of the gas okay and even the lod was poor However, you will see that there are reports on ZNO based sensors where we have good selectivity and other things. So that's what I told you that it depends on how you are synthesizing your material, what type of gas system setup you have. 
okay what type of id you you have so you will always see that there is some you know difference in uh, um, uh, what sensitivity and selectivity that i am getting and what sensitivity and selectivity that you are getting okay for that i triple is trying to make a, a, a you know um, bring all the sensors on the same platform and there is a working committee working on that uh, um, i am also a member of that so we are trying to bring all the setups and everything on the same platform that uh, whatever results i am showing it should also reflect to in your your um, in your um, sensing setup okay so uh, but uh, right now we should assume that if we are having different setups different synthesizing techniques okay different ids we will have difference in um, uh, difference in sensitivity and selectivity but this is what uh, we have like in our uh, in our system we have like uh, zno based uh, uh, s2s sensors that we developed uh, you know uh, was not selective to any particular gas you see this s2s we have highlighted this green uh, by green um, intentionally we will show that uh, in next few slides okay so now we have highlighted some issues like signal to noise ratio selectivity limit of detection response uh, you know those things were some uh, issues Okay, uh, some of you who might be working in the domain might be knowing that 64% is high uh, for 5 ppm am ammonia, but it is not that high. So that's why this response term is written. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, some data for, uh, you know, I have taken from, uh, um, uh, from some literature on uh, uh, CNT based sensors. So you see the CNT based sensors. Uh, uh, the the uh, from the graph you can clearly see that uh, the device is very very poor in, in performing it is kind of chemage option is happening and it is not allowing to recover okay so you have to have some other provision like pulse heating or uv light irradiation or something you know to get it recovered okay so uh, i'm trying to quickly highlight the issues of uh, you know uh, the current technologies like in uh, metal oxides we have seen that uh, uh, signal to noise ratio selectivity response lod's these are some challenges similarly for uh, for cnt based sensors you know uh, the recovery is is uh, one issue okay and that is because uh, the cnt has so many functional groups on their, their their walls okay so they trap and sometime i think in the uh, in the cnt um, uh, you know uh, they are also uh, blocked okay so they are not able to easily get out of it okay 2d materials is is a huge you know um, domain okay and you will find starting from transition metal dioxides to you know a black phosphorus uh, um, hpn you know different clays everything is there in the in in in, the, in this class of material okay and if you talk about synthesis techniques uh, starting from you know top down to bottom up every approach is available for nearly all the materials except few like borophene borophene can't be you know um, developed by uh, top down approach because the uh, bulk is not available in the layered form okay so you can synthesize that on by cvd or some other technique on gold foil or say some i think uh, recently they have demonstrated it on uh, silver foil also okay so uh, those things can be you know um, uh, synthesized by various means and you have a, a huge plethora of you know uh, techniques that you can use to synthesize those materials i will not go in detail because um the time constant i have uh, you know and then uh, tmd is um, um is one of the class where you have all kind of materials starting from a, a true metal to pure insulators okay so you can fabricate you know nearly all kind of devices that you want which is truly made up of tmds okay you can make transducers out of it you can make receptors out of it you can you know develop your passivation layers okay everything you can do with tmds okay and of course they have a huge applications we'll not talk about that but this slide i have kept intentionally because see these tmds i, I have told that they are layered materials okay so you can stack them you know depending on what you want okay okay and for example uh, say i'm stacking ws2 on wsc2 or mos2 on mos2 okay but if i'm stacking that 
with some other material okay okay like uh, i am stacking it with the uh, say say uh, ws2 i am stacking mosc2 with ws2 i will have different kind of band structure uh, different kind of uh, surface properties okay as compared to pure pure ws2 okay so that's why this slide i have kept like uh, when we make a burger you know we 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 try to uh, assemble these materials in in some way okay and sometime we 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 find that the taste is also different for different burger when we keep say egg on the top and say mine is at the bottom or mine is at the top because we are touching mine is for the first time okay so yeah um, this is just an example don't take it otherwise okay but uh, tmds give you a broad perspective to work on a, a, uh, from pure metal to pure insulators and we have a huge uh, you know um, um, arena to work on okay graphene was first material that was tried for sensing and uh, uh, the performance of graphene particularly i i am not um, that fan of graphene okay and we have seen that in the form of uh, um, um, uh, in the form of uh, sensing properties okay you will find that uh, uh, their 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 um, uh, response and other things are not that good as compared to tmds because of uh, um, i think uh, band gap and other problems that is associated with graphene okay for so that's why people move to semiconductors of, of tmds they they are they are family of uh, 2d materials just beyond graphene uh, the, uh, so we have explored mos2 uh, while depositing on you know uh, since i i'm skipping all these things because the aim of the talk is that uh, to highlight the challenges okay so i will highlight some challenges of uh, um, this mos2 that we 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 found okay we developed this mos2 by by growing um, mos2 film on a sapphire substrate okay these are some cross sectional tm images and we deposited on some id okay it was very very selective towards no2 gas as you can see from the hysteresis okay but there is some other challenges okay like you you can see that there is a baseline drift okay response and recovery time is truly very poor okay like uh, you will take about uh, so this rise time if you see clearly it is about 4 minute or so uh, you know uh, so so you don't want your sensor to respond in 4 minutes okay also the current levels if you see since the film is very very thick say 5 nanometer okay the current levels are very very weak okay like uh, um, you, you can see here it is in the range of say uh, varying between 3 3.4 nano ampere to 3.6 or something okay so this will translate into very high response even because the it is changing very quickly i mean um, very uh, steadily but uh, but uh, if you if you will design some packaging and interface circuit you will have to design some interface circuit separately the people working in the domain might be knowing that uh, uh, you you should have different amplifiers and other things to to first amplify these low level currents okay and if if you need a lock in amplifier your cost of the device will go like anything okay so these are some issues of uh, you know um, cvd grown uh, tmds okay now i have some results of uh, chemically synthesized or liquid exfoliated ws2 uh, that we fabricated um, uh, and did some annealing and other treatments okay we have very very high risk okay and the current levels were also like uh, in in a decent range like uh, uh, it starts from some nano amp and it moves to say some uh, micro amp and it was uh, totally recoverable that is very very good that that's what we want from our sensors we also repeated that for after one year or so okay and we have we were having similar performance although the performance has decreased that you can see that uh, this 1800% has gone down to 1200% or so but uh, those things can be compensated and uh, one thing that i want to highlight that uh, this devices was kept in open ambient i mean it was not desiccated and other, other things we have intentionally done that because in practical scenario your sensor will not be uh, lying in a desiccator it will be you know uh, um um it will be situated at some place where where it has to see every gas every dust those things okay so 
So uh, I wanted to show you these two example of MOS2 and WS2 uh, synthesized by uh, two different uh, different ways is uh, that although this material has been synthesized by uh, chemical synthesis, okay, uh, we have other challenges. Although we have we are getting very good uh, response or very high response here as compared to uh, MOS2, we have some other challenges like making good film out of this. Okay, we are deploying some electrochemical and other techniques to have better films, but now uh, till now we do, we we, uh, we have. Uh, you know, uh, we have failed on every front to have good film of this uh, um, um, WS2 ex uh, exfoliated films. We are also trying to print it. Uh, we have uh, succeeded in printing those things, uh, but then performance degrades. Okay. So there is some trade off. Okay. We have to uh, work on that front. Okay. Now, bringing Zedano again, that we have seen uh, in two, three slides back. Okay. We synthesized a hybrid materials material of ZNO and WS2, where zinc uh, ACAC was used as a precursor for zinc. The same uh, precursor was used for for so we have kept all the conditions similar. Okay, so we fabricated some kind of you know heterostructure of this ZNO and WS2. Okay, well, something like this. Okay, and we checked its sensing properties. We have found that. Uh, uh, this was uh, the, this has good sensitivity at about uh, uh, 200 degrees Celsius or so. Okay, but it had very very uh, nice you know uh, selectivity towards esters. Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, one of the um, 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 example that you can uh, always tune the sensitivity of some material with the uh, with the current existing technologies like ZNO. Uh, is known uh, since long. Okay, uh, we have also seen with microwave synthesis that uh, uh, its uh, its uh, uh, sensing properties is not that good. Okay, uh, but we have tried to fabricate some uh, um, uh, hybrids of this material, and we have seen that okay, selectivity of this. So, for example, one company I would not name on this platform uh, was interested in uh, purchasing this type of sensors. Okay. They wanted to target uh, halitosis uh, uh, disease. Okay, um, uh, so they wanted a sensitive sensitive S two S sensors. Okay, so they were interested in this, but they were not going to buy this ZNO based sensors. No, because even say if I synthesize it by some other means or so, I will not have a clear edge. Okay, but if if I am bringing this type of hybrids, we will definitely have. Uh, uh, better sensitivity because of the local nano junctions and other things. I will not go in mechanism, but uh, but it has clear advantage. Okay, not only in terms of uh, uh, of selectivity. Apart from that, in other terms also, like in terms of overall response, the limit of detection, temperature, the current levels that that we want. Okay, it's uh, resistant towards humidity. Those things also improves. Okay. Some other strategies that uh, I would like to highlight here, I will not go in detail because time is already um, uh, passed. But uh, um, some other things that we have tried is uh, making some natural hybrid. And natural hybrids means uh, uh, during the synthesis of WS2 by like uh, during liquid exfoliation itself, we have introduced a bit of heat. Okay. And it has, I have already told that this these materials has tendency to form, uh, you know, um, uh, oxides okay so 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 we have found that some of the sheets has been oxidized the partial oxidation happened okay and this type of uh, materials has formed and you have seen that ws2 was uh, selective towards ammonia at 250 degrees celsius we were not getting any response at room temperature but with this this kind of you know uh, material we were able to detect ammonia even at room temperature although uh, the performance and other things we will not talk in, in detail because it was not that good. Um, I, I, I mean, I can highlight those things, but uh, um, time doesn't allow. Um, but uh, you can clearly see that uh, uh, there is some uh, issues like uh, uh, saturation and other issues. Uh, but LOD and response at the same time was very, very good for this kind of material. Okay. Then we also have uh, investigated some elemental nanomaterials like boron nanostar. Okay. We have found that uh, this kind of elemental nanomaterials are also 
uh, also very uh, good sele uh, selective materials for, for, for gas sensing, but then they are very poor conductors. Okay. So, uh, so current levels with nanomaterials become very, very challenged. So current levels are very, very high, and that is also translated into hysteresis. Okay. So we'll not discuss this and uh, Metal organic frameworks uh, is one of the one of the solution. People are working in this direction. I will not discuss, but uh, I ha we have all, our group is also trying to you know uh, jump into this area. We have this, um, uh, recently uh, we have synthesized some bimetallic um, 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 uh, mops uh, which were sensitive uh, to some gases, but it has some other issues like. Uh, it has some good pores, so they will try to store some store gases. We don't want that. Okay, we have to tune the uh, porosity and other things of these materials. So, the field is. I will. I will. I will skip this because we don't have time. Okay, but quickly we'll see that uh, uh, we are also working on different fronts. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, ferrites, and we are also working on designing um, sensing film. Yeah. So one second, I have a summary slide. Uh, let me bring that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so in the in 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 this talk, we have discussed different materials. Uh, we could not cover all, but we have covered the basic uh, semiconductors that are used in sensing. They can be improved at various fronts. Okay like sensitivity, selectivity, room temperature operation, and other things. New materials are also coming into the picture, but we are also trying to improve by bringing, um, you know, uh, uh, current data analysis and other techniques into picture uh, to improve the current existing technologies also, okay? Uh, transition metal dichloride chlorogenide is one of the solutions, but uh, uh, we should not stop here. We should also move forward. Uh, you know, uh, people are working on different domains like mobs, MXZs, and other things. Okay, um, we have to uh, figure out um, you know uh, the way that we can improve the selectivity. Uh, if we talk in the on the front of uh, um, um, printed electronics, we have to uh, see that how we can improve the printability of the receptor films, and you know. Um, even the transducer, if we want to, if you do, if you want to avoid using commercial inks, okay, then um, packaging. I, I I discussed that packaging is one of the challenges that uh, these sensors are facing, and um, last and very important that uh, there is uh, so much scope, uh, you know, uh, to work in this domain and to to get associated with some industry who are working in this particular domain, okay and uh, we can improve our expertise and we can gain some knowledge from them okay thank you so much thank you very much uh, professor for very informative talk so if you kindly allow us can we take the questions from the participant one by one yes yes sure 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 okay so now the participant floor is open please unmute yourself and ask the question uh, directly okay. <coughs> Uh, uh, hello, sir. Good morning. I am Pramod here from uh, Manipal Institute of Technology. So I have a few QD related to the sensors. So you have explained the various sensor for the different uh, various applications. Yes. So uh, for uh, actually we are doing one of the things like you no know, like uh, ECG and EEG uh, data acquisition. So mm -hmm. what kind of the sensors are used for uh, recording the data of uh, EEG and then ECG and other parameters? Uh, Pramoji, I don't work on EEG and ECG uh, kind of sensors. Mm -hmm. Professor Gandpat in our department is working in, in that domain. Okay, mm -hmm. I think uh, you um, uh, you may write uh, to him. Uh, I think he will be very helpful um, uh, for you. Okay? Uh, yeah, I am also actually in the touch with uh, Pachauri sir in IIT uh, Indore. So okay. I think he's working in this area and recently he has published uh, like, you know, Mahamantra, which is uh, very helpful for uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, a piece of the mind. 
Yes. So, uh, just actually like you know, uh, if you can give something or like you know related to which because we have ordered and also be received that is called biopec device. Mm -hmm. So which can record the data of ECG and then other parameters also like EEG and all. So uh, actually focusing on the, like you know uh, like how to uh, analyze the data uh, once you received it. So we don't have a such like you know ideas about what kind of the sensors are used to record the data. So that's why I thought to better to ask you. So, to get this. so what you can do is uh, I think uh, uh, I understand your problem. You are asking about uh, you know um, uh, at the fabrication front that what yeah, type yeah, of can be fabricated. So uh, I think uh, uh, I can dis discuss with. Um, Pachauri sir also, as well as Professor Danpath also, and mm -hmm. uh, um, I can also look into literature and uh, I think if you can drop me a hi on yes. my email, I think I can get back to you with the uh, uh, more yes, detail. Sir. It's better, of... sir, if you can share your email ID and then uh, we can uh, write yeah, it yeah. if any query related yes, yes. to this. Yeah. Uh, my email ID is uh, jha, jha at the rate itg.ac.in. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'll find out. Uh, yeah. I think that will be helpful. I think we are also, as a sensors group, we also don't want to get concise in gas sensors domain. Okay, mm -hmm. we are also trying to uh, um, um, explore other areas, other okay. sensors. Okay, so I think uh, that will be very good. If you drop me an email, I think we can also have a look. Okay. okay. Yeah. I have one more curious, sir. Actually, uh, I just I uh, have uh, like you know, I wanted to open the sensor council in our institute. Student chapter. So already I'm a faculty advisor of IEEE Comsoc. So how do mm -hmm. we start uh, the sensor council uh, in uh, a local chapter for the student in our institute? Okay. So, okay. so what you can do is uh, um, uh, you can write a, a mail uh, to Professor Anil Roy. Okay. Um, you can copy me as well. No problem. Okay. Okay. I think uh, he will um, he will um, guide you. And Chandramahan, I think he has al already opened it in uh, um, IT Indore. IT Indore. I think he can also. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. I think, but those things can be taken offline. I think you can discuss that those things uh, uh, later also. Okay. Later. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Professor Anil Roy's email ID. I can share. You can. You just drop me an a, a hi with the queries. Two three points. Okay. I will reply you. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah. 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 Hello, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. These are the my. Theory. Yeah. Thank oh, you, Pramodji. May I ask my question? Yes, Satendra. Go question. ahead. Oh, okay. Hi, Dr. Ravindra. Satendra here from Bitspilani. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, sir. Hi. So my question is related to one question is uh, from the wide band gap semiconductors. So do you have any idea like uh, how can we utilize ultra wide band gap or Wide band gap material for sensing purposes. A wide band gap materials people are using for UV detection, I think, mostly. Okay. If we are looking for the hydrogen sensing uh, using uh, gallium oxide or uh, those kind of materials. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, so, uh, as such, uh, um, see, see, these gas sensors are mostly. Um, dependent on, on your surface properties, okay? Um, so, of course, it has to be a semiconductor, okay? Uh, and of course, it has to be, uh, uh, it, it has to possess some band gap, but exact relationship between uh, this uh, band gap and the surface properties are still not explored much. Okay. Like uh, in so, the present, in the present time, uh, government is focusing towards the you know realization of hydrogen as a fuel. Yeah. yeah. So for the purpose, like if we are uh, trying to sense the hydrogen for extreme environmental applications, so what I thought, huh. this class of material like uh, gallium oxide, silicon carbide, this class of material may be a potential candidate. So I was looking for the literature as well. So I could found very few papers on that. Yeah. So then so in that case, to... what I will I will suggest, uh, see, um, as exper experimentalist, we also struggle at that front that for what gas, what materials we should target. Okay. So we, uh, for that, I think uh, uh, it will be good if you can also explore this uh, um, um, DFT kind of thing parallelly. Okay. So, it's simulations. 
yeah dft simulations if you can do uh, density functional theory um, uh, simulations i think uh, uh, that will give you an idea that your wide gap material is uh, is, uh, is um, good sensing i mean it is sensing hydrogen or not so my postdoc will be joining on uh, 1st december uh, she really? has done good amount of dfts i think we can collaborate at that front no issue sure 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 and my second question is related to uh, simulation of gas sensors. So have yeah. you conducted any amount of work, piece of work on Comson simulation of gas sensors? No, uh, no. We, uh, as I have told that we are uh, experimentalist basically, but one of my MTech student is using Silvaco uh, for, uh, for catalytic fat kind of sensors. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good. So I'll be writing you an email. For, yes, yes. For in touch. Actually, um, I was uh, your neighbor. I was in Siri Pilani uh, for 1.5 years or so. I was yes, yes. One of the one of the, my friend is there in Siri, Udit Palji. So he was telling about you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Udit ji is a very good friend of mine. I know him. So <laughs> yesterday evening, yesterday evening, I was in Siri. Oh, okay, okay. Very so nice. He had a word, and uh, he was telling about you like uh, you were there for a year. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was more than a year, 1.5 years or so. I will be coming to Delhi on uh, uh, 3rd or 4th December. So if I'm coming to Pilani, we'll meet. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, yeah. Ravindraji. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your clarification. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, myself, I'm Sharno. I'm from Manipal Institute of Technology, Manipal, Karnataka. Okay. Actually, I have a few queries, sir. What is the Please. use of ID instead of normal um, drop costing uh, metal contacts? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you can't make uh, metal contact by drop casting. Okay, you are you you are telling that with shadow mask you can make uh, uh, electrode. I think uh, you mean that. Okay, um, the problem with the, uh, we have also done some you know um, um, sputtering and uh, thermal evaporation kind of contacts. What happened, for example, if your film is very, very resistive, okay, you will yes. not be able to um, uh, start even your experiment at room temperature, okay. But if you have this kind of IDs and your, your film is in some kind of parallel and series combination with these IDs, what happened? If you are having two, two materials, for example, say resistance R1 and R2 in parallel, for example, okay. And R1 is very, very high, R2 is very, very low. It will try to bring the resistance very near to R1, which is lesser. Okay. So similarly, here, when you have a metal electrodes, okay, which is having, you know, a very, very less resistance, say, few ohms, okay, your film is of some giga ohm, okay, they are placed in parallel. What happened? You are bringing it to some kilo ohm or say even in mega ohm, okay, you are able to start your experiments. One thing. Okay. Okay, this is one important thing. Another thing is like uh, um, it 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 makes your job easy. So if you are having say metal electrodes, for example, with dots, okay, and you have not lithographically lithographically you have pattern, okay. Yes. So if if you are doing some batch fabrication, okay, you you will end up um, uh, maybe you know. Um, uh, making contacts at several positions if your shadow mask is not correct. But if you do it lith lithography, you will have, you know, better control on what kind of ID, what kind of devices you are comparing. Okay. So, but the first point I will emphasize, the, the first point I discussed. Okay. Yes, sir. But yeah. uh, exposure for uh, this after ID, like mm -hmm. exposure for the film is like ID is more right compared to sensing material. No. Like on the surface of the film, if you putting the ID means. Say I'm uh, say uh, in in both the cases. If if you are for example, usually what we do. It so, can so the, if, give the values of this uh, no, sensing Sharon, through the so, ID. Yes, please listen. What happened? What we do? We have a silicon wafer. We do lithography. Okay. Yes, we yes. fabricate our our IDs. Okay. Yes. Then we deposit some film. Okay. Yes. If you do it in other way, for example, if you have a film, okay, if you have if you have a film and if you want to do lithography, it will be more difficult, okay, yes. because uh, uh, you you may be ending up you know removing your your film itself, okay, yes. uh, by some in etching in, in, in doing some etching or something or in your development, it will be a problematic, 
okay usually what we do we we have sensors uh, we, we have transducer beneath we we coat our film by sputtering or something on the top so your exposure it is it is uh, um, ensured that uh, um, your gas molecules is only seeing the your sensing film okay okay, okay sir, sir yeah. last question sir yes yes uh, sir this uh... Getting the facility is very difficult, sir, for uh, like basic study. We are doing just synthesizing and sending the samples for uh, uh, some other uh, institute or something. Mm -hmm. What is the point of uh, your thought about that, sir? So, like, sir, you are a student or a faculty? A research scholar, sir. Research scholar. Uh, getting the slots and getting the... After getting also, it is very delayed. After getting this one of my series sample, I am getting high conductivity, sir. For CD to SNO4 sample, mm -hmm. uh, on that I am putting the electrode for AG as an electrode, sir. That uh, sensitivity is very low, sir, and very high uh, signal to noise ratio. Mm -hmm. I am not feeling that uh, satisfactory with re results. Again, mm -hmm. I have to do some gas sensing. Further, I don't know how to get the facilities and all. Yeah, that so, is. Uh, um, yeah, because here some IIC they have facility. Their getting slot also is difficult. So, what is your thought point about that, sir? See, like uh, collaboration, it is difficult. Like sometimes it will work out. Sometimes it is difficult. Sharanu, then also I will suggest you to um, focus on collaborations only. Because if I will suggest you to develop your own gas sensors, I think uh, sensing setup. I think with low uh, low cost uh, low cost. Uh, uh, set up, uh, I think uh, uh, the report that you will generate will not be that correct. You should have electronic MFCs, you know, you should have good uh, calibrated gas sensors. So, of course, I know that gas sensors lab, running a gas sensor lab is very, very diffi difficult because you, you should always have this running cylinders, okay? Uh, you should yes, always, uh, uh, so that is a problematic thing. Uh, that I understand, but uh, I think uh, uh, you should rely on uh, those kind of collaborations, uh, which which uh, in which you you are getting some reliable result. If you will develop, uh, say, with uh, two three lakh or five lakh rupees in your lab, I think uh, uh, how reliable you your results will be, I doubt. Okay, so I will not suggest. So if you are getting good amount of fund, say um, your prof is getting say uh, thirty lakh or so. So I think uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, that will be enough to develop a good facility, and that can be a departmental facility. You can talk to I think institute or so. I, I think I can't yeah. comment on that in more detail, but um, I can give you a hint that a collaborative approach will be good in this kind of work. I know slots and other things will delay, but uh, then you will have some concrete results. Okay. Okay. Sir, for, sir, for queries I have, sir, like regarding gas sensing setup, can I send the mail? Can you get me? Yes, yes, you can send the email, but uh, if if I am delaying, don't don't worry, you can put a reminder again, okay? Like, sir, final year, I, I am in final year, so that is the worry, the time constraint. Otherwise, okay. I, would, I would be fine with that. No, no, drop That's why I ask. See, organizer is telling you something, okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't have that much time. Okay, uh, Saranu, uh, you can directly uh, directly write your mail to professor because we have a time yes, constraint. Sir. So now yes, we sir. can't take more questions from the participant because professor has also busy in busy schedule. So he thank has given his you. time. So now uh, I would request to all the participants, if you have any queries, you can directly write to professor Chia on his uh, official email ID. Uh, and uh, now I would request to our team member, Minu Sharma, please thanks to our speaker. Can I have own questions now? Uh, thank you, Professor Ravindra Kumar Jha, for an enlightening and entertaining session. We are grateful for the time and efforts you took to share your thoughts and experiences with our IEEE community. I also thank to our sponsors, Excel Instruments, Optimize Solution Limited, Sincel International Private Limited, Rudraksh Technologies. And I also thank to all the uh, audience. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So may I leave, Chandran?
thank you very much. much thank you sir thank you sir thank for you this very wonderful much. Yeah. for wonderful yeah thank you very see much. you नहीं बकवास करने नहीं रहते चूचे नहीं कुछ भी बकवास कर रहा कुछ कुछ नहीं रहा